Well, hello everybody. Quite a big crowd tonight. Um, yes, I am recording. So there you go. Everyone can see this candle on the uh, screen. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I just uh, found this candle, candle on one of the Google images, not my own, but it illustrates the things that I want to talk about tonight. So, <clears throat> uh, tonight's uh, class is about meditation on a candle, on the concept of a candle and what um, the Zohar has to say about this idea of a candle. <clears throat> now, first of all, let's start off with a verse. Um, the verse states like this, and we've mentioned it many times before. In fact, we've uh, discussed the whole concept of candle before as well. But um, nevertheless, the, um, the, uh, what we're going to talk about tonight is the light of the candle, really, and not the, all the four parts of the candle. We spoke previously about the four parts of a candle, which is the wick, the oil, or the wax in this uh, particular type of candle, and then um, the... Uh, and then the flame of the candle, and then the cup that holds the oil. We spoke about that before. Um, but tonight we're only going to be talking about the candle itself, the light of the candle, which is what the Zohar talks about. The Zohar uh, it discusses the verse, Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam. God's candle is man's soul. <clears throat> God's candle is man's soul. The Zohar goes on to say that there's really three aspects to the light of a candle. Three aspects to the light of a candle. Now, uh, can everyone see the arrow that's pointing to the flame over here? Is the arrow uh, clear? Yeah? Yeah, okay, good. So you can see here that there are actually primarily two parts to the flame. There's this part of the flame over here. That part of the flame that the Zohar calls the Nahora Uchama, the dark candle or the dark light. As you can see, it's dark over here. Only at the top of it does it start to get light. But this part of it in particular, closest where it's closest to the wick, is where it's dark. So that's the first type of light that the Zohar talks about. The second is it talks about the light which is called the Nohoira Chivira, or the white light. The white light. The Nohoira Chivira. And then it talks about uh, a third light, which is a Nohoira Nistoro, or Nohoira Gnuza. It's the light above the candle that is not even seen and transcends the candle. It doesn't um, illuminate as the other light does. Okay. So again, there's three aspects of the candle. There's the, the light, the dark light, which is closest to the candle. There's the white light, which is above that, which is above the dark light. And then there's the light that we don't, that we don't see. So says the Zohar, are there three aspects also to, um, there are three aspects to, um, To the, can everyone uh, still see the arrow here? <laughs> you still, what, what do you see on the screen now? You see Hebrew writing or you still see the candle? Writing, okay, I'm gonna take that away and uh, we'll move it there, all right, there we go. Okay, good, fine, okay, so. What then 
um, is the Zohar talking about? Primarily, we're going to discuss the first two levels of light. And the Zohar said before, as we, uh, as we mentioned, the whole concept of a candle is that it's a representation, it's a symbol of the soul of a person. Ner Havaya Nishmat Adam, God's candle is man's soul. In other words, just as a candle lights up the room, lights up the darkness, because you wouldn't use a candle in the middle of the day, as the Zohar goes on to say, Shraga Batiram Amayahane, a candle in the mid, in mid, at midday, what's, what, what is it going to add? It's not going to, what's it going to help? It's not going to add anything. So we only use a candle to light up the darkness, obviously, and that's what the soul comes to do, to light up the darkness. The darkness of the world, essentially. So, in the way that the candle lights up the darkness, there are two ways in which it lights the dark light and the bright light. Let's call it the dark light and the bright light. The soul, too, lights up the world in a similar way. There are also two lights, so to speak, of the soul. The one aspect of the light of the soul is that aspect which is closest to the body. The light that is generated from the interface of the soul and the body. That's called, again, the dark light. That's the dark area. However, there's also the light that the soul generates which transcends the physical world, transcends the physical. That is the white light. These actually represent two levels of soul. The one level of soul is called the soul which is closed within the body. And the other is the more transcendent aspects of the soul, the aspects of the soul which is not fully closed within the body, it's affected thereby and it affects the body and the soul that's clothed in the body. But it transcends it uh, just as this light the uh, again the light of the candle. Let me see if I can um, uh, get that annotation thing again. One minute. All right, there we go again. Just as this part of the candle is attached to the dark light, but is always above it. So too, there's an aspect of the soul which is attached to the soul within the body, but is above it. Let's just discuss them a little bit more. The soul that is clothed within the body, in other words, the life force of the body and the actions of the body in the world, the person's activities in the world. The purpose of that aspect of soul is to interface with the body, to give the person life in this world, to give him life, him or her. But because it's closed within the body, that light is dimmed to the extent that it's called a dark light. It doesn't illuminate fully. It's there, its purpose is to make the body, so to speak, into a wick, to set the body afire, to set the body on fire. Now, when we say to set the body on fire, don't get me wrong, <laughs> we're not into immolation and uh, all kinds of uh, things like that. But what we mean is to imbue a person's life in this world with enthusiasm, with heat, with heat and at least some light. That is called, in the language of Kabbalah, that's called Biru Rim. It's called Biru Haguf. Biru rectifying or clarifying or purifying and elevating the body. Although the body itself, this, 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 uh, this wick, is made out of coarse material, where it interfaces with the candle, as you can see over here in this, uh, at the tip of the wick over here, it itself is starting to glow. 
And without the wick, the fire wouldn't have anywhere to hold. Without the wick, without the body, the soul would not have anything to be held down to, be held down with. So as we see uh, in the picture over here, the, the, the body itself also starts to glow. When the soul within it is enthusiastic, when it's heat, it's light, it's warmth, it's fire. Now, everybody's heard of the concept of aura, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah I even asked that question. Here we go. Um, does yellow signify anything? I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Yael is talking about the idea of aura. Yes. Now, the word aura itself is, uh, itself is actually from the Hebrew. The Hebrew, if you take the word aura, uh, or aura in, uh, in English, actually in Hebrew, it would be written. Oh, one second, what happened here? In Hebrew, it would be written aura. Aura means light. And if we uh, transliterate that, that would be aura. Aura, that's how you would spell it. The word aura comes from the word or. It comes from the word meaning light. So yes, that is aura. But now, when we talk about aura, and uh, people do talk about the whole concept of aura, so people are sort of looking around a person to see if they can see, you know, like like artists depicted in uh, ancient paintings and things like that, with a sort of glow around the head and so on. Let's not get too uh, um, too literal about these things. There's a verse that says, "Chokmas Adam Ta'ir Panav." The wisdom of a person makes his face shine. The wisdom of a person makes his or her face shine. It's that inner glow, that inner shine, that inner um, enthusiasm for life, for living, for, for doing, for achieving, etc., etc. That's essentially the aura. When you see a person who, a wise person, again, Chokmas Adam Tari Panov, the wisdom of a person illuminates his face, causes his face or her face to shine. You can see people like that. You can see people that walk around with this cloud over their heads with this dark expression on their faces. And you see a person who lights up, who sort of lights up the room when they walk in. That lighting up of a person that we can all see and we can all sense as opposed to sort of a darkened countenance, that kind of thing, shkhoyani, uh, I'm dark with, with, with anguish and with suffering and, and so on and so forth. But instead of that, if one sees the illumination from within, that bright countenance of a person, that's basically his aura. And we can all see it and we can all sense that that's what the aura is. You don't need to start going looking for, uh, you know, um, uh, blue, blue auras around people with gold flashes and so on and so forth. That is the aura, at least the effect of the, of the light of the soul. But the first impact of the soul on the body is only this dim light over here that you can see in the uh, candle. I hope the candle is still on the uh, screen, right? Um, the, so that, the, f the first thing that one can sense is only the, the dim light called again the Nahara Uchama, the dark, the dark light. Uh, we're talking about things that all of us can see, uh, Terry. You know, some people see other uh, other manifestations and so on and so forth. That's fine. Not everybody sees them, but everybody can see the wisdom of a person that illuminates their countenance. Okay. Now, what we want to do now is discuss what this light that is close to the candle, that is close to the wick, what is it uh what is it all about so again as we said before that light close to the wick in other words that which illuminates the body the wisdom of a person that illuminates the countenance that is the idea of birurim 
of rectifying the world. Whereas the higher light, the white light, or um, in some cases yellow, which is, there's no clear, there's not always a clear demarcation between dark and white, right? Between the dark light and the white light. But there is sort of a gradual progression. That's what the yellow color is over here. It's sort of that gradual progression from darkness into light. It's not a hard and fast barrier that one steps across. It's a number of steps, a number of steps, until one actually gets to the pure, the pure white of the light, right? And similarly, it is with the, um, with the two levels of soul. The soul which is there to do the rectification of the physical world and to illuminate the physical world, to cause the physical world to burn with enthusiasm for positive action, positive thoughts, positive speech, for uh, fulfillment of the commandments, for cleaving to God in prayer, and so on and so forth. And there's gradations in that. It's not just a clear one single line of, uh, of demarcation. Now, the white light, on the other hand, that is the true light of the soul. That's the light of the soul in and of itself. It's a concept of... Um, God's candle is man's soul, not necessarily to do anything, but as the manifestation of godliness in the world. It's just a manifestation of godliness, not there to do anything to the world, but simply to, it simply illuminates. It's the concept of a little bit of godliness within us that illuminates without having to change the world as such. Um, the Zohar also talks about these two levels being parallel also to the two aspects or two of the aspects of the eye, of the human eye. There's the dark circle of the eye, the dark circle of the eye, in other words, the pupil, and then there's the iris around it, the colored part of the eye. Now, what does the colored part of the eye serve? Um, I'm not sure whether science has a real explanation of why, what, what, what purpose it is. They can explain what it is and how it works and why it's there, whatever it is, but they don't know exactly what it does. The, the, uh, the iris surrounding the pupil, most, uh, according to most opinion, is just there to regulate uh, or to modify uh, the light. Uh, Dennis, don't worry about it. You can get the recording. It's fine. Um, okay, so. What the Zohar, therefore, is saying is the pupil of the eye, the dark part of the eye, is what receives the light within it. It's the iris around the eye that emits light, so to speak. You know, when, uh, when, when, uh, when, when they say that a person's eyes flashed with anger, it really actually happens. Or when they gleam with pleasure. Right? Where's the gleam coming from? It's coming from not the pupil, but what's around the pupil. The color around the eye, around the pupil, and the, even the white of the eye to a certain extent. Now, one has to take this not only as a, um, yes, that is correct. Um, I'm not familiar with that, uh, Gandalf, or not familiar with that, but, um, I'm sure there are parallels in uh, in many uh, in many places. In any event, let's um, let's now think a little bit. And in fact, 
not only think, but um, hold in mind the meditation. Let's just, uh, yeah, if you want to close your eyes, you just want to stare at the candle or whatever it is. So this is basically the meditation. Meditation is that there's a light. But that light next to the wick is a dark light. It's a light which is there in order to illuminate the physical, in other words, to illuminate my body. And that light being close to the physical is in order to be, to be able to relate to the physical is somewhat constrained and therefore it's not fully light. It's a darkish, it's a darkish light. But it has an advantage. And the advantage is that it's not just up there and doing its own thing. It's here for a particular function, and that function is to illuminate the physical world around me, to illuminate my body and to illuminate, to illuminate the physical world around me. In other words, to set the wick on fire. What burns the wick is this particular light. But above that light, on a higher plane of light, a higher degree of light, is the meditation of the white light. That that white light is the true glow of godliness within the soul that is not necessarily there for the purpose of rectifying the world, but it's there as a revelation of godliness within my soul. A revelation of godliness, in other words, it's, so to speak, the light of godliness which illuminates, which is illuminating uh, my soul, not for the purpose of rectifying the world, but just simply for the sake of illuminating the soul. That inner light, that inner illumination, is always in a state of flux. If you have a look at a candle, you won't see it over here because it's a still photograph, but if you look at a candle, if you actually stare at a candle, you'll see that the candle constantly moves. It's constantly in a state of flux. Now, obviously, we know that the state of flux is caused by movement in the air around the candle movement in the air around the candle. Nevertheless, the fact is that it's the white part of the candle, much, much more than the dark part of the candle, that sort of dances around. The Zohar and our sages explain that that is, that is the idea of the ratso veshov of the soul, the running and returning of the soul, the ratso veshov. Now, what is the running and returning of the soul? The running of the soul is the desire, the strong desire of the soul to cleave to its source above, to cleave to the source of light above. In other words, for the soul to cleave to God. And that is why it is running out of itself, so to speak. It's running upwards. The flame always burns upwards, just like the soul always longs to merge into godliness. Nevertheless, even though it wishes to merge, to sort of jump away from the wick and jump away, separate from the other fire and merge into godliness, nevertheless, it is kept down here, so to speak, in order to provide illumination for the lower level of the soul. So this again is a new, this is a new idea that the soul as it is, the higher level of soul, is there to provide illumination to the lower level of soul. And it's the lower level of soul that does the work in the world. So the higher level of soul is there. It's, it itself is simply an illumination of godliness. But God wants the soul to remain down here and not jump up and separate itself from the wick. It wants it to sit on top of the other flame in order to bring illumination to the lower, to the dark fire, to bring joy and to bring, to bring illumination, to bring light to the aspect of the soul which struggles with illuminating the body. So the soul illuminates the soul, the soul up above illuminates the soul down below, and soul down below illuminates the body. And that is the meditation 
on the candle that the Zohar talks about. Now again, the upper part of the candle is always in a state of flux, in a state of going up and then coming down again. It's in a state of Ratzov Shov. It's in a state of moving upwards, cleaving up above, and then being given its function, its duty, its task of illuminating the lower levels of the soul in order for the lower level of the soul to have the power and the light, so to speak, to illuminate the body, to make even the physical body shine. Hasidic texts uh, go on to explain that these are also two aspects of um, these are two aspects of, uh, of, our, of our endeavor in the world. Part of the idea of study is to study um, Talmudic law, which deals with actual cases, legal, Jewish legal cases in the world, in order to sharpen the mind, in order to sharpen the understanding, in order to teach a person how to see ideas and principles and arguments from both sides of the coin. You have to be able to see the other point, point of view and get to the bottom of it in order to be able to either support it or refute it. Whereas the other aspect of Torah study, the inner dimensions of Torah, in other words, the Kabbalistic aspects of Torah and the Hasidic aspects of Torah, those aspects of Torah are simply light. They're not there to illuminate the physical world, but they're there to illuminate the soul itself. And so that aspect of study too is compared to the white part of the candle. Torah study, Torah is also called a candle, ner mitzvah the Torah, or the, the, um, the commandments are a candle, they illuminate the body, fulfilling the commandments is like the light which is close to the wick, that's called the candle, ner mitzvah, the Torah, or, and the Torah is the light, the light that illuminates, the light that, the white light. Now we said before that there's a third part, there's a third part of light, the hidden aspect of the light, the light that is not revealed, the light above the candle and surrounding the candle, so to speak, the light that is not revealed. Now, that light is the essential bond, the essential bond of, uh, of the soul to God, which cannot be uh, revealed, at least not at this point in time. It will be revealed in the future, but it's not revealed at this point in time. And that is called, that's the aspect of the soul, which is called Yechida. Yechida, from the word Yachid, meaning completely at one, completely united and harmonized with uh, with the essence, the essence of the soul harmonized with the essence of God. So we don't talk very much about that third aspect of the light because it doesn't really give us anything to uh, to do. But these two aspects, if one thinks this through, either while watching a candle or imagining in your mind's eye the uh, uh, a burning candle just like this, and think this whole thing through and how it could illuminate your particular corner of the world, your particular um, home, your household, yourself, your life, your acquaintances, and so on and so forth. Uh, if one does this meditation on a, on a regular, fairly regular basis, you will find that the illumination starts to become visible to other people as well, in the sense that they can sense they can sense your um, the wisdom of a person which lights up his or her face. And that is the meditation on a candle, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Yes, that is correct, uh, Dennis. Correct. Okay. Um... All right, there we go. Anything else? Um, any questions? <laughs> 